Welcome back everyone to the Hello World guys, this is another episode of the C++ Advanced Game Series and in this video as you can quite clearly see we are going to implement the physics uh, in our game. So I have created an empty physics class which we are going to implement in this video and uh, of course first in order to implement physics we need to have a physics engine. Now we are not going to create our own but use another one because creating a physics engine can be a whole project on its own. So we are going to include the box 2D in the physics engine. I have already gone ahead and installed box 2D on my system and I'm going to include for example any header from this uh, as an example and if you don't have box 2d what you can do is uh, go ahead and uh, install it from their github website uh, from their github repo and just kind of build it yourself or if you are using visual studio you can use VC package to actually install it in a much easier fashion or if you are using Linux you can of course use uh, any other uh, tools to install that uh, you know there are a bunch of package managers so I'm going to uh, I have installed it using VC package and uh, now let's go ahead and create a B2 world here called world so uh, this physics class is going to be basically our main class for handling different stuff and we actually need to include world.h and a world is uh, quite obviously basically a thing that represents all physics but I'm going to make this static because I want this world to be and not something that we you know uh, change like in that way so we uh, are not going to have an instances of physics worlds but instead we are going to only have one physics world in our game since we are only running one simulation and that should allow us to uh, kind of just uh, access the physics from anywhere so let's go ahead and do that and create the update and init methods currently our init is going to be empty we of course need to define that variable because it's static so we will create a b2 world and uh, it's going to be physics colon colon world and uh, after doing that we can go ahead and uh, uh, you know go under the init uh, actually we need to initialize this with a b2 vec2 which represents a vector2 and we need to pass it whatever uh, value we want for gravity which we are going to have negative 9.2 on the y just like it is in real life you can use 10 here if you prefer that instead currently init is empty for update we are going to call the step method on the world now there's a problem here which is the step of course accepts a time spec uh, step to determine how much time it needs to simulate but the problem with this is is that the time actually depends we can of course pass delta time here but that would uh, depend on the frame rate and uh, box 2d generally does not work if the delta time is variable we want it to be a fixed amount so uh, what is and by the way these two are just uh, the amount of uh, uh, you know how many times it simulates the thing so the more you have these numbers the greater accuracy it's it, uh, it is and 6 and 2 generally work fine so instead of creating a complicated system for executing the physics at a separate frame rate than the rest of the game we can just render the whole game at a lower and fixed frame rate for that we will say set frame rate limit and uh, on the window in the beginning method and we'll set it to 60 now our game is pretty simple and it should never actually go below 60 since it's a 2d game no matter how old the hardware is and what it should do is that uh, and this uh, uh, now this delta time should always be around at whatever 1 by 60 actually since our frame rate is going to be 60 for most of the time and if the computer is less than 60 uh, frames per second then you can expect some uh, glitches to occur with the physics and we'll probably implement a better more proper system uh, for handling this later on but for now this is going to work fine hopefully so let's go ahead and uh, uh, yeah that's pretty much it for our physics of course there are a bunch of other methods we need to add but for now let's go ahead and try to actually call these methods correctly in our game so let's go under game.cpp here and uh, bef after we have initialized everything actually we need to do this before we initialize those steps so I'm going to uh, after maybe we can do it before we load the files but uh, the files may have some kind of we might be loading you know some important stuff here so let's just uh, go ahead and initialize it before we initialize anything else else but after we have loaded the resources of course we need to make sure we include physics.h here the actual header and then we can call physics colon colon init we are calling this because we might want to have some stuff here later but for now we are not actually doing anything in the init method now in mario i'm going to create a begin method which we will actually be using in the next video so let's create that method and uh, yeah that's all pretty awesome let's go under game.cpp and call mario.begin as well after setting mario's position 
and uh, in the update method of course we want to call physics colon colon update with mario so yeah let's uh, um, with the before mario we'll call it before mario and that should basically be uh, pretty much it so i'm actually going to end this video here it was a short one because we basically set up box 2d in the next video we'll create actual bodies that represent mario and the tiles around him and see how some physics happens so we'll do that in the future with next video so make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one and bye